Superman is the, the lost son, the last son of Krypton. And, um, you know, Superman, my first book is an homage to Superman and other superheroes. And I, I think there's some uh, correlations there between Jared and Superman. No, oh, okay. The other thing is the, the shaman keeps uh, chanting. Can you tell me what he chanted and what it actually means? Well, I didn't go too much into the chanting. Um, I wanted to keep the story moving, and I figured I would keep um, some of the philosophical and spiritual nature of it I, I would save that for the sequel where I get more into the culture and some of these chants and what they mean and, and um, with the first one it was more of uh, an introductory novel to introduce these characters to the reader and uh, as you've probably noticed it's, it's a pretty quick read and it happens all in one night and I edited a fair amount of it out of the story just to keep it moving very fast and I didn't want to bog it down with, with too much culture and I'm going to save all that for the second book and really get into it and um, it's going to be a great sequel. Okay, because see we get to the end and Jared repeats a prayer from his adopted father and he says thank you Lord for my life the love and laughter suffering and strife I would not possess the inner strength I have today if not for being taught by you in this way. Lord, thank you for my life. That was so significant for me as a reader because even though I might have gotten lost in all of the turmoil or, or in all of the activity, I get to the end of the story, and, and my faith is renewed because I get to the end, and I understand that it's not about me, it's not about the writer, it's not even about the character. It's all about God. Yes, I, uh... Did I, is that too heavy? No, no. <laughs> no, that's good. I... I remember summing my emotions uh, to write this this prayer, and it, it came to me, and I wrote it in a, a couple of minutes. And um, I think it's fairly profound, and it sums up a lot about life. Exactly, because see, you know, we don't have to know where we came from, you know, on a natural gram, and I understand people wondering who their parents were uh, and, you know, who they belong to. But the truth of the matter is, if we're Christians and we're true believers, we belong to God. And the Bible tells us that even before the foundations of the earth, that our predestination has been set in place. And so as we move along this path, you know, if we just keep believing, as we learn about ourselves, that... God has already worked it out, we get to the end and we can utter a prayer like Jared did. And so for me, it was a much deeper reading and understanding than most people. And if I've misinterpreted anything, you know, please forgive me. Because <laughs> there were a lot of spiritual implications, I thought, in the story uh, itself. Absolutely. I'm a very spiritual person. It's what I'm all about. Um, and that prayer, you know, it's, it means a lot to me, and it's so true. Um, you take the good and the bad, you know, good things happen to people and bad things happen to people, and they're both very important in your spiritual development. All the adversity that you overcome matures you as a soul. So you can't be angry. God is not a cruel being um, you know he's more akin to a sculptor with a block of stone before him and his incessant hammering is not meant to do the stone harm rather it's meant to chip away the rough edges to reveal the beauty within and as bad things happen to us and we overcome them 
we become stronger and more spiritual. And that's what Jared has found out because, boy, he had a tough going. <laughs> oh, yeah, at the beginning, because, I mean, isn't walking by faith walking blind? Yes, and, uh, yeah, the book opens with that, that quote, too. It opens, yeah. It's the God who took away my eyes so that my soul could see. Could see, yeah. I was just really like, wow, you know, <laughs> damn, you know. I, and did you, I mean, did you really understand at the point that you started to write this novel that it would be what it is today? Um, yes, I had the feel for the story, and um, I actually didn't, hadn't planned originally on him being blind until I was talking to my mom, who is a very spiritual woman and just my, my anchor, and um, she was telling me the story of this uh, blind plowman, and uh, I just thought to myself, of course, Jared is blind. So if it wasn't for her, um, <laughs> it wouldn't have had that uh, that sort of spiritual metaphor of being blind and, and finding yourself and, and your path to God. Yeah. So was this a labor of love for you, Jonathan, to have written this, this novel? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I just, I love the characters and, and the story and, and the whole Cheyenne culture. Um, I'm drawn to... <clears throat> I'm drawn to spiritual cultures um, from er different areas of the world and different times of history. Um, one story I want to do is on the ancient uh, Korean group called the Hwarang Warriors. They were responsible for uh, uniting the three warring kingdoms of Korea before Korea was ever Korea. And just really... Um, rousing, uh, spiritual, inspirational, uh, epic story, and uh, it'll make a great novel. And the same with, um, you know, the Dogmen. They, uh, they, were, they were such a spiritual people. They were so in tune with nature. And, you know, I, I often wonder what would have happened if, uh, if the white men had not come here and sort of taken over things and uh, where the, the Cheyenne and the rest of the tribes would be today. Yeah. And, and that would be a question worth asking. You know, would they have continued to live um, as they did? Um, mm. were, or were we all predestined to um, have to rely on God because of man's, again, failure to... Uh, walk in obedience to what we've been called to do. Yeah, somehow I don't think that the Cheyenne, if they were left alone back then, um, I don't see them today. Uh, I don't think they'd be texting on their Blackberries. <laughs> well, you know, I'm really not texting on Blackberries. <laughs> so I don't know. But Jonathan, what did you learn about yourself as a result of writing the Dog Man comic? Well, um, I'm, I'm in tune with that culture, and, and I probably, um, I actually, I believe in reincarnation and that we come here many, many times, and, uh, or at Spirit School 101, and um, that we, we forget all past life each time we come here, and we can't know how we're going to perish either by, uh, you know, plane crash or old age or whatever. Um, and... My affinity for this culture is probably due to a fact, the fact that I, I was uh, a Cheyenne at one time, you know, maybe 150 years ago, I might have been at Sand Creek. And um, I remember a few years back when a Tom Cruise movie came out called The Last Samurai, and that's about a real-life character who was at Sand Creek, and one of the scenes in the movie uh, shows that massacre, and... Uh, you know, I was writing The Dogman at the time, and I just, it was so disturbing to me, more so than somebody just going to see a movie for some entertainment. I just felt so tied to that event, and now here I am writing this novel about it, and I think that's, that goes deeper than just 
some sort of curiosity or interest I have. I think it's on a spiritual level that I am tied to, to that tribe and that event and their culture.